Jenny Maxwell was a Hollywood starlet who got the chance to appear alongside luminaries like Elvis Presley and Jimmy Stewart during her tragically short lifetime. In fact, her first Hollywood experience was screen testing alongside Frank Sinatra. Sadly, things came crashing down for Jenny when she and her husband were murdered. Join Facts First as we explore how Elvis girl Jenny Maxwell's death has been solved after 40 years. Jenny Maxwell was born September 3, 1941 in Brooklyn. She was an only child, which led to her parents spoiling her a great deal. This led to Jenny being a fairly strong-willed child who was dead set on getting her way. It's been said that Jenny's strong will and spoiled nature ultimately led to her demise at age 39. Her childhood offered her the opportunity to explore her talents and imagination. She had a penchant for fantasy since early childhood, and it was no surprise when she decided to pursue a career on the stage. She began attending a local drama school, but she didn't have to struggle through the ranks very long before she was given a lucrative opportunity to come to Hollywood. This was by way of a Hollywood director named Vincente Minnelli, who spotted young Jenny during a performance. Vincente brought Jenny to Hollywood, and her first job was to screen test alongside legendary performer Frank Sinatra. Though Jenny didn't get the role in the Frank Sinatra film she was testing for, which was a film called Some Came Running, it was certainly evident big things were in store for her. Jenny Maxwell's Hollywood Career After her screen test with Frank Sinatra, the aspiring star began receiving steady work on television, with one of her most notable roles in the hit sitcom Father Knows Best. Around this time, she met the man who was soon to become her first husband. She was only 17 when she married her husband, Paul Rapp. He was an assistant director, and Jenny met him on the job. The two fell in love relatively fast and eloped. This was in 1959, and 17-year-old Jenny didn't even bother to inform her parents. A year later, she gave birth to a son. However, even though she was now a mother, Jenny was still insistent upon becoming a star. Thankfully, she was continuing to make waves in Hollywood as an actress and was given the designation of Hollywood Deb Star of 1960. This gave her the opportunity to appear on The Bob Hope Show where both Bob Hope and Joan Crawford formally introduced her to the television audience. It certainly honored her to be introduced by two huge stars. She continued to make notable TV appearances before receiving her big break. This was in the form of 1961's Blue Hawaii, which Jenny co-starred in alongside music legend Elvis Presley. Some of the other popular TV programs Jenny could be seen on around that time included Bonanza and The Twilight Zone, but her appearance alongside Elvis solidified her star status. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Jenny liked to party. Jenny was said to have enjoyed her drugs, and she was rumored to have partied a lot with Charles Manson victim Sharon Tate. But ultimately, the thing that caused Jenny's tragic demise was something that few around her could have predicted. It was also something that took the cops a while to figure out. Her career seemed to be going fine, with appearances alongside luminaries like Jimmy Stewart in the film Take Her, She's Mine, but things weren't going well in her personal life. She began having troubles with her first husband. They ended up divorcing, and her hard partying lifestyle made it easy for her husband to get custody of their kid. Following this, she was only able to see her son sporadically. At the same time, she wasn't getting along with her parents. Jenny realized she needed to make a change in her life. She managed to get her act together after divorcing her husband and losing custody of her son. She was able to secure partial custody of her son after giving up drugs and continuing to get notable work on television. Around this time, she met and fell in love with a much older man named Tip Roeder. Tip went on to become her second husband. He was a Hollywood lawyer with an intimidating reputation. He liked to tell people he had connections to the mob, and he probably wasn't lying. Jenny fell for the man despite his unbecoming reputation, and the two tied the knot in 1970. A little over a decade later, both Jenny and Tip would be shot dead while eating lunch together at a diner. Following their wedding ceremony, Jenny and Tip moved into a house in Beverly Hills to live together. Jenny came into the marriage with the intention of being a housewife. She had partial custody of her son, and Tip had five children of his own. Sadly, the union fell apart not long after it started. It seems that while Jenny and Tip began having trouble early on, Jenny was advised by her personal lawyer to remain married to Tip for at least 10 years. According to the lawyer, this would allow Jenny to get a bigger settlement. Jenny took the advice, and her choice to go for that larger settlement, instead of getting out of the marriage when she felt it had soured, went on to inspire her murder. As soon as they'd been married for 10 years, Jenny gave the announcement that she wanted a divorce. 
She already had her own condo lined up, and she already had her legal team in place. It has since become common knowledge that Tip and Jenny were involved with numerous other people over the course of their marriage, and some have even suggested Jenny would brag to Tip about all the different men she slept with. Tip couldn't have been too surprised about Jenny's cry for a divorce, but he was certainly shocked at the settlement she was asking for. He became incredibly angry when he realized Jenny had pulled one over on him by prolonging the marriage so she could get a bigger settlement. As soon as Tip caught wind of this plan, he went about coming up with a plan of his own. Who killed Jenny Maxwell? Numerous people have come forward saying that shortly before his and Jenny's murder, Tip approached them with the business proposal of murdering his wife. One man suggested Tip had asked him to murder both his wife and Tip himself, suggesting Tip had become so distraught by the whole episode he was now suicidal. All of these men turned down Tip's request, but it seems Tip still managed to find someone to do the job. In June of 1981, Jenny Maxwell had minor surgery scheduled and she needed a ride home from the hospital afterwards. Tip offered to drive her home and she accepted the offer. On the ride back, they stopped for lunch. It was during this lunch that the two of them were murdered. Authorities initially chalked the murder up to a botched robbery and that was the story that went through the press. As it turns out, the event that killed Jenny Maxwell wasn't a botched robbery. As keen viewers will have already deduced, Tip made good on his attempts to find someone to put both his and his wife's lives to an end. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Jenny Maxwell? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.